You know, that's when I started seeing miracles. I could step out and do the word. I seen blind eyes open. I seen a lady, I walked in the office. This is a college, a university. You guys know what they're teaching now, okay? This lady's blind, guys. Can't see. She hasn't been able to see in 10 years. She has a surgery scheduled the next day. And by faith, because I've been spending time with my father, he's been teaching me these things. In the quiet time in the morning, when my wife and my kids are asleep, I don't get up and study for a test. I get up and study what my father wants me to do. I say, hey, you want to be healed? She goes, yeah, I want to be healed. I said, all right. Look, I lay my hands on her, lay hands on the sick and the recover. Man, it took a genius to figure that one out. Lay hands on her, the Holy Spirit. I'm a conduit, man. That's it. If you guys know what electricity is, a conduit. It just flows through it. That's all you are. The power of God comes out of you and into that person. Her eyes were healed. She has her hands up in the main office of this college campus praising Jesus, man. She just got free eyesight. She's going to pay a doctor tens of thousands of dollars the next day to cut her eyes open and maybe she'll have 40% vision. She just got 100% vision for free. But what'd that cost me, man? It costed me everything. That cost everything for me for that anointing to come out of me. It cost me my pride. It cost me my ego. Oh, man, you might be embarrassed. What if it don't work? You're deceived if you think you're doing it. You can't save a fly. You can't change one hair color on your head, man. Jesus says, you love me if you do what I say. If you say with your mouth you love Jesus, and then when the trial comes and you do the opposite of what his word says, you don't love him. You do not love him. You make him your Lord by doing what he says, even if it costs you your life. Even if it costs you your life. You want his power to start coming out of you? You want God to show up big for you? Because that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to get your, his blessing into you. Then you got to lay down the old man and quit letting it come up. If anyone's in Christ, they're a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, all things are new. The new creation has come. So why are you trying to live the new creation with the old software? It don't work. You got to let the Holy Spirit teach and train you who you are now. And it, the only way that the Lord can teach and train you for who you are in him is to give him your time. You have got to give him your time. When you give somebody your time, what are you really giving them? You're giving them your life. What does God require of you? Your life. You, you give him your life, he'll give you his life. His life is what makes things work. His life is that supernatural power that everybody craves. His life is what prospers your marriage. His life is what prospers your kids. His life is what prospers your decision-making, your business, everything. Above all, my beloved, I want you to prosper and be in good health as your soul prospers. Your mind, your will, and your emotions, that's your soul. If, those, if your soul is not prospering, then you're not going to prosper and have good health. It's that simple. How do you prosper your soul? You got to get the word engaged, man. That's the only way. That's the only way. God will make a way where there's no way. He'll destroy your enemy, man. Whatever you're facing, whatever's coming after you, all you got to do is call on the name of Yahweh, and he will run your enemy over. He will take him out, man. And then he will bury him with the Red Sea, and you'll never hear from him again. But you got to put yourself in a position for him to show out and be your God. You got to want, you, man, you got to come to him because you're in love with him. You can't just come to him because you need him. He's not a genie. I serve Jesus Christ because I'm in love with him. I don't serve Jesus Christ because I'm afraid if I don't do something his way, he's going to send me to hell. You see the difference between relationship and religion? Religion says I'm going to follow God because I'm, I'm scared of him, and if I don't do something right, then I'm not going to get what I want. Relationship says, man, Lord, you said if I open the door of my heart, you'll come in and eat with me, and I can eat with you. 
And he'll tell me great and mighty things that I, I can't know without your help. And he'll show you where you missed the mark before you were born again. He showed me why I'm not supposed to do the things I used to do. He didn't just say, don't do that no more. He gave me a spiritual revelation of why I was dead in sin. And I seen it. I had a vision of it. So now... I don't not sin just not to do it because he says it's wrong. I don't do it because I'm in love with him, man. You got to be in love with him. And you prove that he's your God and you love him because you do what he asks you to do. When he tells you to give that server a $100 tip, how do, you, how do you prove you love him? Do you stick the money in your pocket or do you give it to him? It's pretty easy. It's simple, man. It's simple. You just got to listen to what he says. When he asks you to do something, he's trying to promote you. He's, he's looking for one trustworthy man. One. It just takes one. As for me, I'm going to be that man. By his grace and his power, I will be that man because that's what I choose to believe. And you can say I'm in pride, but his word says I'm in humility because that's what he says about me. He calls me good and faithful servant. He calls me the apple of his eye. You're in pride if you speak anything contrary to the word. If you say you're poor, you don't have enough, you're sick, you're not good enough, you're in pride. And pride comes before destruction and the haughty spirit before the fall. You got to start seeing yourself how God sees you. This might sound stupid. I don't care. I look in the mirror and I say, you are righteous. You are holy. You are redeemed. I, I please the Father. I'm more than a conqueror. Everything I put my hands to turns to gold and is blessed. Everywhere the soles of my feet touch belongs to me. It's mine. You can have whatever you say, man. That's his promise. Say unto this mountain, be plucked up and cast into the sea, and don't doubt in your heart. But believe the things you say, and you will have whatever you say. If you truly believe what I just said, that you'll have whatever you say, you need to start thinking about what you're saying before it comes out of your mouth. And you need to start saying what you're believing for and where you're going and not what your circumstance looks like. Quit living in your circumstance. Quit letting your circumstance be your Lord. Let Jesus be your Lord. You got to understand how simple the gospel is. It's so simple, but it's going to be tested. It's going to be tried. You notice when you got born again, then the trials started coming. You didn't have no trials in the world because you weren't believing God for nothing. You just did whatever the doctor said, whatever your wife said, whatever the teacher said. You weren't believing for nothing. You were a double-minded man, and that's why your life was cursed. But the moment you said, yes, Lord, I'm yours, man. Take me. And you started walking in the truth, and you started believing for something. You started believing the impossible. Everyone thought you were nuts. Why? Because you're different, man. You got a new heart. You got, you're, a new, you're a new man. You're a God man now. And everybody around you is still living in the world. They're still trying to put their identity on you. That's not who you are. You're who God says you are. You got to look in the perfect law of liberty, which is his word, and you got to say, that's who I am. Come hell or high water, that's who I am. Don't care what it looks like. Don't care what it feels like. That's who I'm going to be. If you read scripture, there's your part you got to do, and then there's God's part that he'll do. Really simple. If you're kind and truthful, then you will have favor with God and man. He can't give you favor if you're not kind and truthful. But how does God know if you believe him? You'll be kind and truthful. Even to your enemy. Even to the person that you know is despitefully using you. Another simple one. The word says, draw near to me. Then I'll draw near to you. You got to draw near to him, guys. You got to do your part first, man, because you can't please God without faith. It's impossible. 
because you got to believe that he exists to even go to him. And you got to believe that he's going to reward you because you're diligently seeking him early in the morning. You got to go after him, man. You got to go after that. He will never let you down. When you're going through the trial, he's right there with you. He don't send you in the furnace and then say, I'll meet you on the other side, son. He goes, hey, man, let's go. We can take him. All right. <laughs> I get in my prayer closet in the morning, and I'm down on my face, man, and I hear the Holy Spirit say, get up and let's go. We got this. You're supposed to co-labor with him, man. He's supposed to come out of your hands and your feet, your eyes, your ears, your heart. He wants to co-labor with you. This is going to challenge some of your thinking, but he needs you just as much as you need him. He made it like that. It's called relationship. He can't accomplish what he needs to accomplish without man, and we can't accomplish what we need to accomplish without God. It's, it's beautiful. That's the truth. If you want to start seeing the God of the impossible in your life and you want to start seeing many mighty miracles, then you got to believe him by faith and start walking where he can perform miracles. And it's not going to be on the shore. You got to start walking on the water, man, because that's where the miracles are performed. Everybody's going to say, hey, man, that's real scary out there. You need to come back here. And the more you taste them and see them, you'll be running out there and you won't even be able to see them people anymore. The kingdom of God to me, man, is like an island I came to and I've never been here before. And you can either sit on the outskirts or you can go and take it over. My Bible says the violent take the kingdom by force. It's mine. My Bible says it's his good pleasure to give me his kingdom. So why, if you're not taking the kingdom of God, then you don't believe that God wants you to have it. And if you don't believe God wants you to have it, you don't believe you're his son. Those of you who are, in par who are parents in here, do you want your son to have everything? Or your daughter? I do. I want them to have everything. Now, there's principles and there's rules and the regulations they got to walk in because I'm not going to spoil them and make them brats. That's the same thing with him. You got to walk in the spiritual laws and principles that he set up to receive his blessing. You do what he says now so that he can bless you. It's not about getting to heaven. It's about bringing heaven to earth. The only way to bring heaven to earth is to walk in the truth of his word. You got to do it diligently, day in and day out, week in and week out, month in and month out, year in and year out. Consistency. Patience. Let patience have its perfect work that you're not lacking in anything, right? Do you know what patience is? It's constantly being consistent. Thank you, Mr. Doyle. You taught me that. Constantly being consistent. That's patience. People, you know, wait on the Lord. He'll renew your strength. He'll, you'll mount up on wings like eagles. You'll run and not grow weary. You'll walk and not faint. Lord, teach me to wait. When you're being patient, you're not just sitting there waiting for nothing. You're still doing all that you can do but you're waiting for him to bring the answer. And then when he brings the answer, you go after it with all you got. I want to give you the mic, dude, or I'll just keep going. He never runs out, neither do I. You guys know what you heard tonight? That was 80, 90% word right there. So I challenge you to go back, listen to this video, and find the scripture for each one of those things he said. Because that was a whole lot of word that you just got. And my message is really simple. I'm not going to add anything to that. That was everything the Spirit wanted to say. And this is the only message that he gave me tonight. And it had to do with the Yahweh and that, all that word that you just had. Like Paul said, I know nothing but Christ crucified. Jesus Christ, the hope of glory, lives in you to do and to be all that was said tonight. A son, everything, 
an heir, everything, a king, everything, a Lord, everything, a father, everything, that he's given you everything, everything that you heard. It's Christ in you. And if I have one message, one thing in my whole entire heart and life, it's Christ in you, the hope of glory, Christ crucified for you. You need to know the value that was on that cross. It's you. I need to know. I need to know the price that was paid because that price, you're worth it. That's your value. It's his blood and his body. You're worth that. If it was one of you, he'd do it all for you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's all I want to talk about is my Christ and my King, my best friend, my Lord. I give him everything. He has my life. All that is mine is yours, Lord, and all that is yours is mine. That's called marriage. That's called intimacy. That's called oneness. Do you know that's what he prayed, his prayer to the Father before he left? He says, make them one even as we are one. One, even as the Lord Jesus Christ and God are one, Make them one with us, even as they are one and we are one. That was everything. He's in you to cause heaven on earth, man. Everything that was said today, everything, it's Christ in you, okay? Christ in you, the hope of glory. All those precious and magnificent promises that were said are available to you. Anointed one, a Christian. Christ means anointed one. To be a Christ-like one is to be a Christian one, a, a anointed one, a little anointed one. Yahweh, there's a lot that encapsulates that word, but there's a video that the Spirit told me to play tonight and it encapsulates just a fraction of who your king is, just a fraction and he's in you. See, if there was ever a baton toss, a baton handoff, it, I wish every church would say this. Jesus did everything that he did so that you guys could do it too. We are his body. He needs us just like we need him. I can't do anything without him, he, sa he says. You can't do anything without him, but you can do everything with him. That's the baton. He says, greater is that I go so that you guys can receive the Holy Spirit and we can make this thing cover the earth. His glory will cover the earth, it says. <laughs> let's do that. All right, Joey, let's play this video. This is your king, this is your Lord, and he's in you. He is in you. The Bible says my king is the king of the Jews. He's a king of Israel. He's a king of righteousness. He's a king of the ages. He's a king of heaven. He's a king of glory. He's a king of kings. And he's the Lord of lords. That's my king. I wonder do you know him? My king is a sovereign king. No means of measure can define his limitless love. He's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. He's impartially merciful. Do you know him? He's the greatest phenomenon that has ever crossed the horizon of this world. He's God's son. He's a sinner's savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He is the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the fundamental doctrine of true theology. He's the only one qualified to be an all-sufficient savior. I wonder if you know him today. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He strengthens and sustains. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleans the lepers. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captives. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the age. He rewards the diligent. And he purifies the meek. I wonder if you know him. He's the key to knowledge. He's the well of wisdom. He's a doorway of deliverance. He's a pathway of peace. He's a roadway of righteousness. He's a highway of holiness. He's a gateway of glory. Do you know him? Well, his 
life is vastless, his goodness is limitless, his mercy is everlasting, his love never changes, his word is enough, his grace is sufficient, his reign is righteous, and his yoke is easy, and his burden is light. I wish I could describe him, for yet he's indescribable, he's incomprehensible, he's invincible. Stop it. Tyler couldn't find any fault in him. 